Finally, we found a story of an explorer more riveting than Dora on Film Threat Reviews. <laughs> I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zoriana Kitt, and today we review Amundsen, The Greatest Expedition. Uh, the life and facts of Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen, the first man to arrive on the South Pole is explored today. Uh, directed by Espen Sandberg, stars Pals Ver Hagen, Christian Robeck, and Catherine Waterston. Um, yeah, so uh, should let you know that this is uh, the story of an explorer, uh, Roald Amundsen, and he was the first person to arrive at the South Pole, the very point of the South Pole. Um, what did you think of uh, Amundsen? Um, this movie fascinated me because I didn't know this story at all. Uh, I didn't know any of this. And in fact, so many times I paused this movie because I wanted to go on Wikipedia and just <laughs> just sort of go like, did this re really? Like, th wow. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to understand it even further because I, I, wanted, I wanted even more detail. So I, I kept going down the Wikipedia rabbit hole as I was watching this because I I was never taught any of this information. And and it, it was, I mean, from a filmmaking standpoint, I mean, it, it wasn't like the greatest movie. Although I do have to say, I'm a fan of the filmmakers. I first came to know um, them through the movie Contiki a few years back, which I loved. Set on a boat, sailing to Polynesia. Then Hollywood does what Hollywood always does when they find foreigners that are brilliant. They put them on big franchises and they, they, they put these guys on... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of <laughs> Black Pearl. So another boat water movie. And yeah. now with Amundsen, there's plenty that now it's ice water that that we're dealing with. So yeah. there's something about this group uh, of filmmakers that that they really can do, they're really into ships and water for some reason. Yeah. Well, let me go to your your earlier point. Um, when I was in high school, my history teacher was a huge film fan. And it seemed like uh, every other week when we were learning history, uh, we were he was showing us a movie, uh, Ben Hur, for for example. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, th this is what I felt like while watching that. I was back in high school, and my teacher uh, wanted to talk about exploration. Yeah, and he puts on Amundsen because this is, uh, if anything, it's uh, it is a historical film. It, yeah. it is it is very much so in the sense of. We're just we're going to tell you the story of this guy's life. Yes. And it's also, you know, a, a great explorer movie has not been made in quite a long time. Yes. And and this is a true explorer movie. And uh, not only are you on location. Well, I, I doubt they were actually on location, but um, not only are they on the South Pole and the North Pole and the Arctic, whatever. Um, but then you get to see the the kind of behind the scenes things of, of how he got his plans financed, how yeah. he how he did a few shenanigans to to actually yeah. get to the South Pole. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and also, this is something that I would watch that I, I, I know for certain my, my history teacher would have played in high school. Yes. And and also um, a lot of biopics kind of tend to um, uh, 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 lionize a, 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 a character or just really kind of portray them as super heroic. This guy was, he was not a very nice person. I mean, yeah. he was very arrogant. <clears throat> he was very vindictive. Mind you, at the same time, he was, uh, he never got the respect from um, uh, outsiders outside Norway of his achievements, which kind of led him to kind of have a chip on his shoulder. But yeah. all of that is, like you said, you don't see that in um, in other biographical movies. And so I truly felt like I learned who this character was. He loved married women. He, uh, he uh, uh, decided that it was going to be his way or the highway, and he didn't really care how that affected uh, the, the people around him. Um, well, but he made a deal, and he broke that deal yeah, uh, to, exactly. get, to do what he wanted. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, well, yeah. Let me let me just add. Yeah. Um, you know, the, you talk about his character. You know, the the thing about him, he's an explorer, an explorer in every sense of the word. He would be willing to die uh, to get to the South Pole mm -hmm. if that's what it had to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he insisted that everyone who went with him had the same kind of passion. Yes, exactly. And that was and that was tough. I mean, that was. Yeah. 
that's a tough thing to expect from from uh, from your crew, and and not all of them were were on board for that because you know these expeditions we forget they lasted years. I mm -hmm. think the there was a research one that was what five years, seven years. He was out five there. years, yeah, yeah, with, with uh, you know what five men or seven men together. Uh, uh, for five years, that that's a long time, and that's uh, you know that does do things to a person's psyche and spirit and all that stuff. So it, it's yeah. it's hard. But I also just learned a lot. You, you also learn a lot about um, uh, the race to like we see these race to space movies where we see U.S. against Russia or you know countries fighting to be first. And this was this same kind of thing about countries racing to be the first to discover the North Pole. And it was Norway versus uh, Britain. And we learned just how much the Brits were pioneers in a lot of this stuff and how they prided themselves on that. And um, how how countries were such sore losers when they weren't first. And, and when Amundsen wasn't first, he decided that he wanted to be first at something, hence, the trip to the South Pole was born so he could be first. But at the same time, he didn't get the respect from the Brits because they, because the way he designed to get there in a way that would keep him and his crew alive, not sick with scurvy, uh, well fed and get there all in one piece was considered um, barbaric by yeah. the Brits. <laughs> And and so they refuse to accept that they came in second. They sort of still feel that they came in first. Like, like you cheated somehow. <laughs> yes, like he cheated because he executed a plan and 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 was meticulous and made it look easy. And I learned so much from that plan too about the clothing and sled dogs and stuff. So I mean, I, I found myself telling people yeah. about this movie uh, uh, in the days afterwards and being able to rattle off like a lot of impressive facts that I learned. It was great. Yeah, I found it fascinating. I, I did also find it very long. Um, it's yeah, it's yeah. almost two hours. I I had that Lord of the Rings moment where where uh, I, you think the movie's over, and then it you realize you're only halfway through, and you got another one. And then and then you know it it tries to portray uh, the, the exploration, the the dangers of exploration as as authentically as possible. So there's a lot of uh, you know frostbitten body parts and things like that, and. I, it, it made me kind of squeamish, and and I thought I could turn my my avert my eyes at those moments, but then you realize, but this is subtitled, and so you have to look at the screen in order to read what everyone's saying, and then there's a giant half a foot in front of your face. Yes, and, uh, and I was like, there's, there's just no winning here. Um, yeah. um, but I do want to say for for people who aren't necessarily fans of foreign film. I wouldn't classify this as foreign completely. It's not, yeah. It's because not. Uh, it, there, there is kind of a through line. The story is kind of does lead up. It starts as, um, it goes into a, a flashback, but not that far deep into a flashback. But so it, there is kind of like a bookend narration. And those mm -hmm. characters that take us through his lifespan are, are are portrayed by English actors, and and so there's a lot of English language uh, here, just for yeah. Well, they, they 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 remain true to the characters. So yeah. if someone was from Britain, they spoke English. Yeah. Uh, his last wife was or girlfriend was Canadian, so she spoke English. Yeah. Catherine yeah. Waterston role. Um. Yeah, and, and I think what's weird about the Catherine Waterston role is that it kind of serves as a, a through line into his overall story. And I felt like if it wasn't the for the fact that she was a real person and played this role in his life, that Hollywood would have just written her out at that yeah. point. So yeah, I, I do appreciate yeah. the authenticity, even though it was kind of a weird, a weird addition to the story. Yeah, weird only because it's true. Exactly, and then you see those pictures at, in the end credits. I mean, that yeah. was great. It just solidified everything that 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 everything that we saw was indeed true. Uh, I'm finding you're you're an incredible history buff. Uh, you you're fascinated. You were uh, distracted by the fact that you wanted to learn more about the story <laughs> while watching the actual movie, uh, but uh, you loved it and you soaked it in nonetheless. So uh, uh, I'll go eight and a half. Um, I'm going to stick with the eight. I'm going to stick with the eight uh, be just because cinematically, as a 
film uh, and 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 the way it was done from a filmmaking standpoint wasn't um, as exciting as what was happening. I thought the I thought it it could have been made even more exciting. I really was fascinated by this story, and and I do think it's it's worth it's worth watching. I mean, North Pole and South Pole was, I mean, those are two things we take it for granted today. I mean, we watched the George Clooney movie, Midnight Sky, and like he's somewhere up in the North Pole, right? So we just take these things for granted that these are habitable places today, despite the cold, when back then, not that long ago, it really was there was, we couldn't even find it. Uh, and I think you also liked it very much as well. Um, and it, it made, made you uh, think that you were sitting in class a little bit more. I think maybe you gave it a seven. I gave it seven and a half. Uh, I mean, I found it enjoyable. I would, you know, if, if someone was watching it, I would definitely watch it again. Uh, yeah. But one thing, uh, I, I did like the visual style to some degree. Um, you know the the opening moment when they're in an airplane flying to the North Pole. The the visual effect of that, the the camera being in the middle mm. of the airplane, panning back and forth, uh, and then the the crash. This is all in the first uh, minute of the film, so I'm not spoiling yeah. anything. Um, I thought that was amazing. I, I love that cinematography, the 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 special the weather effects. But then at the same time, you know, he's in. He's supposed to be in Antarctica. He's supposed to be in the Arctic. And you just do get a sense that this is all computer generation. Yeah. Computer was. graphics. As good as it looked. Um, I'm I'm really I'm I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it just yeah. it feels like it feels like animation, like live action animation. And Fast and Furious, I keep bringing that up, but it's the same thing. That's that's just nothing but a, a cartoon. And this is it, it feels the same way here. At least with Midnight Sky, they were in the actual location. Minor quibble there. Uh, still a great film. Uh, you know, if you're into exploration, uh, I certainly was when I was in elementary school. I, I did love watching exploration movies. Um, so that that was definitely an appeal for me with this one. And it, and it comes through with flying colors in that sense. So, yeah. so I gave it a seven and a half. All right. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe. Let us know what you thought of Amundsen, The Greatest Expedition. Uh, it's on it's in theaters and on video on demand now. So with that, let's get out of here.